Good morning, everybody. Welcome to worship this morning. It's lovely to see you. I had a look at David's songs for the service, and I thought, he's going all out for Christmas. So I thought, well, why not? Let's go for it. Um, so what I've done is I took a Bible reading that we very often have uh, at our carol service, and that's from John chapter 1. And Ian, could you bring up the first bit for me? Lovely. Thank you very much. Um, so this bit of the Bible talks about Jesus as the Word of God, the, the visible, audible expression of God. And it talks about him being right there at the beginning. And, and this is what John says. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him <coughs> nothing was made that has been made. And uh, that made me think of the song Ancient of Days. So we're going to sing that now. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto the ancient of days. From every nation, all our creation, bow before the ancient of days. Every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee shall bow at your throne. In worship you will be exalted, O God, and your kingdom shall not pass away, O ancient of days. Thank you. Ian, if we could have the, the next little bit from John 1. I'm, I'm using, uh, for those of you who just come in, I'm using bits from uh, John chapter 1, that glorious passage that talks about Jesus and uh, proclaims what he's come to do and then singing the songs about it. So the next bit is, the light shines in the darkness. The darkness has not, not overcome it. John talks about Jesus as the true light that gives light to everyone. He was coming into the world. And we're going to sing, Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Here I am to worship. We'll all be singing in the same tune in a minute. <laughs> Made this heart. 
Today we're celebrating the God who came down, who stepped down into our darkness and who wanted to make us his children. And John goes on to say, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of a human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. So our next song celebrates the fact that we have a father who's chosen to adopt us. This is our family's anthem, this one. I will sing your praises.
Lovely. And we're here to sing God's praises. We're going to proclaim his glory. John goes on to write, The word, that's Jesus, became flesh, made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Let's celebrate Jesus and give him the glory as we sing our next song. Holy is the Lord. morning everyone isn't it wonderful to be in church I, I was going to say third time lucky but that's not right we're third time blessed I think because we're actually in church this Christmas I don't think we were well, we were in some form maybe with masks on last year and certainly not the year before so it's great to see everyone here this morning we're going to light the advent calendar in a minute so it's just a couple of notices um, one of the most important things is we're two weeks away from the village carol service and that will be in the church and that's on Sunday, the 11th of December at 2.30 in the afternoon. So it'd be lovely if um, as many people from our church and the other churches in the village come to that. Uh, sorry, what did I say? Apologies. He'll be at the school. Thank you. Peace down school. Uh, next Friday, we have Messy Church here in um, the afternoon at 3.30. And um, Cameron wants to thank everyone that's... Um, given the, the uh, shoe boxes. We had nine shoe boxes and a £40 donation, so that was really good. And I believe that's going to Ukraine. Is that right, Carol? Great. Okay. So without further ado, I've got lots of little helpers here, um, and we're going to try and safely light the first Advent candle. So today we light the first Advent candle, and that's the candle of hope. We remember the hopeful longing of people waiting for a saviour, and we acknowledge our own hope that we too might be filled with the light of Christ. So may the light of hope burn brightly in our hearts. Amen. 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 Without further ado, I'll welcome David to lead us in the rest of the service. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. 
Sunday in Advent. And um, I always like it when it gets to, to this time of year because um, uh, it gives us a chance to sing a whole bunch of songs that we don't sing the rest of the year. And uh, despite what Jill said earlier on about my selection of songs, my, my reasoning is that um, you've only got about four weeks to sing all these Christmas carols in. So you need to start early. <laughs> so even though it's still November, uh, we are very much uh, getting a, a Christmas theme going um, and we'll be looking at um, these Advent themes as we journey through this season heading towards Christmas Day itself. So uh, I hope you're ready to, to sing and uh, to celebrate and to uh, anticipate the Christ child uh, being born uh, for us. So let's stand together as we come in worship and praise of God. We will sing, sing, sing Joy, Joy to, to the world to receive Jesus as the baby born for us. May our hearts be full of joy, our voices declaring that Christ is coming. He, the Savior, is here for us. And that message is a message for all the world. And so may we sing with hearts and minds and lives that display that Christ is here. The Savior is for us. And so we continue our singing as we sing, uh, Come, All You Faithful. Come, all you faithful, be joyful and triumphant.
It's funny singing <coughs> any version of that song and singing the, the last verse when Jesus is born. But of course, although we're anticipating he's being born for us again, he's born for us each and every day. And we are alive in him just as he is alive in us. And so we do celebrate that truth uh, even before we get to four weeks today. Okay, just there. Just to warn you, four weeks today. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you that uh, this time is marked by a message of hope. A hope that a Savior is on the horizon. A hope that a Savior is coming to us. And for those who have known that Savior, who know him day by day, we give you thanks that Jesus is born for us, that he is here, sent from the Father to those whom we love, each and every one of us. And so we give you thanks, we praise you for Jesus Christ. <laughs> Joyful, joyful, we adore Thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like clouds before Thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin. Yeah. 
Have a seat. <coughs> Nick, where have you gone? There you are. I was looking for you over there. So Nick's going to come and um, uh, present the JMA Awards for this year, and hopefully we've got some people here to receive them as well, which will be good. Morning, everybody. Um, I'm not very well prepared for this this year. I say, probably say that every year. Um, I think all I'd say is um, Jesus came into our lives. He came for everybody. He came for the whole world. And the, the work of JMA feeds into the work of the um, Methodist World Mission Fund and just goes to support people around the world who are sharing the love of God. So I think that's probably enough said, to be honest. Um, we, <coughs> J- JMA, I guess, was traditionally um, something for the younger generation. We have less younger collectors than maybe we used to. So um, if, if anybody feels, I know it's, it's t- difficult times at the moment, but if anybody feels that they maybe would like to get involved in JMA, it um, doesn't involve a lot, just collecting a few pennies here and, now, here and then. Um, there's a, a colourful magazine that, that comes out several times a year with sort of stories and pictures and things in, so... Um, if anybody is interested, see me um, afterwards or next week or whenever you feel that you're, you're called to, to join in, really. Um, so I've got some awards. Um, I say we're a little bit struggling for, um, for younger people, but we're well supported by JMA. Um, Ian, there's a slide, I think, if you can find it. Not that one, because I got a bit, or, bit disorganized and put the birthday slide in this week instead. <laughs> but anyway, for JMA, um, yes... It's because I can't wait for my chocolate, that's right. <laughs> so, yeah, so the JMA year goes from, it goes with the Methodist year from September through to August. So, last year um, we raised £193.04. So, thank you for everybody who collects, donates, gives everything. <laughs> so, our, our first collector is Oscar. Oscar's not here this morning. Is Evie feeling brave? Would he, Evie like to come up and collect Oscar's certificate? Yes? <laughs> Um, thank you. Um, and then I've got Nikki. I don't know whether Ava w- would Ava like to come up and collect Nikki's certificate or not. No. Would somebody else like to be a helper? No. No other helpers. Are you going to be my helper again for a bit more? Yeah. So this one actually should have given you a JMA magazine. I'll give you one in a minute. Um, this one's for Anne and Dunford. Anne sits right at the back. Thank you. Um, and then there's Joyce. So Joyce. I don't think Trish is with us this morning, so I'll give Trish's later. Um, Ian, Ian collected Ian Souter, so um, Jill, perhaps you'll give that to Ian. Thank you. Um, Karen collects, so maybe, you know who Karen is, don't you? And that, I think, is everybody, so... So thank you all very much. Um, the money is, is put to good use. If anybody would just like a copy of a JMA magazine, you see I've got lots of copies here. Um, please see me afterwards, or if you're interested in collecting or giving, that'd be fantastic. Thank you. That's me. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Nick, and thank you to all our junior collectors. 
It does, yeah, JMA stands for junior. Uh, yeah, it, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. But um, if any of you uh, who, are, who are junior and a bit younger would like to know more about it, then have a chat with Nick and he'll tell you all about it. Or if you're a bit too shy, send your mum to have a chat with Nick and she'll sort you out. Okay. Uh, let's pray now because uh, Harbour are going to go off to do some exciting uh, Christmas themed activities. Um, what are you doing this morning, Julie? Advent. Fantastic. <laughs> so it might involve candles and, and other things, so that'll be really exciting. So let's pray for Harbour as they go off this morning. Lord God, we thank you that uh, the light of Christ comes for each one of us, no matter how old or how young. And we pray for our uh, young people as they go now into their own uh, time and sessions. And uh, may they discover more about you and the blessings of Jesus Christ. Uh, so bless them now as they go in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Right, see you later. Go on, go on. Shoo, shoo. <laughs> When we get into Advent, um, the message that, that uh, comes to us through Scripture um, starts to change from some of the things that we've seen throughout the year. At other times, we might be hearing stories of, of Jesus meeting people and, and healing people and teaching them and so on. But at this time of Advent, the, the message is, I think, if we have ears to hear them, are, are directly to us. God is speaking to us through his word, and he's saying the message that uh, is coming to you today is still the same message as it was when these words were first written down. And you need to hear them in the context of who you are today and what you see around you today. And the, the passage that we're going to hear this morning from Matthew's Gospel is, I think, a, a good example of that. And it looks like Fliss is reading for us. Excellent. Thank you. The reading is taken from Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 to 44. The day and hour unknown. But what about that day? or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and given in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and all took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill. One will be taken and the other left. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know on what day the Lord will come. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Thank you. The version that um, we've just uh, heard from Bliss 
uh, says, uh, keep watch. Other versions might say, keep awake, uh, those of you on the sound desk. Um, keep awake, because um, you don't know what's going to happen. Um, and the, the question I think here is for us is about being a church, being um, individual disciples, followers of Christ, is how do we keep awake? What does it mean to be a church that is awake? What does it mean to be a Christian who is awake in these days? And, and then other questions come out of that. Well, what's the difference between us as a church being awake and being not awake, slumbering, uh, being a bit dozy, whatever it might be? And then how do you prepare for Jesus coming? How do you ensure your wakefulness, if that is a real word? How do you ensure that you are awake? Over most of this uh, last year, on the, the bypass, the farmer who has the big sign uh, there says, uh, Jesus is, is coming, are you ready? I think he's just changed it. I think I noticed that he's just changed it, but I didn't read it when I went past today, uh, the other day rather. So I need to, to read what it says now, but I think it's probably a Christmas message now. And I thought, when I first saw that, I thought most people who drive past this won't have an, a clue what this sign means. But then I thought, actually, that's probably not a bad idea because it might cause them to think, what on earth is that all about? And even if just one person thinks, what is all that about and finds out, then the sign's done its job, hasn't it? Are you ready for Jesus' return? Because that's what this, this story is about that we've heard this morning. It's about Jesus' return. And we're getting ready for Jesus' coming at Christmas. But we know he's already come, don't we? You know, we, we get our crib scene together and the Christ child is already there. We know how that story works. We know the ending of that particular part of the story. There's Mary and Joseph and then one night Jesus arrives. So he's already here. And we've seen him grow up. We've seen him teach. We've seen him heal people and and bring back the lost and bind up the broken and release the captives and give sight to the blind. We've seen him do all of that. And we've perhaps experienced that ourselves as well, personally. And so we're not waiting for Jesus to come because he's already here. And so this time of Advent, about being awake, about being ready, is as much about Christ returning as it is about centering ourselves again for the fact that Christ is already here. So our reading, we saw Jesus encouraging his followers to be awake or be alert or be vigilant. And I think all those sorts of words are really good reminders for us. So if you're looking for something to, to focus on during Advent as you, you move towards Christmas, other than, you know, how much is that turkey actually going to cost this year? Have you seen the price of turkeys this year? Unbelievable. And, you know, who's coming and who's going to that relative and who's coming to our house and, you know, what should I get that person who's got everything? If you've got any ideas, let me know. Um, and all those sorts of things. Well, in the midst of all that, if you're thinking, how do I prepare during Advent for Christ's coming? then these words about being alert and being vigilant and being awake give us that starting point. And I think the vigilance one is a really good one. Be vigilant. That's about looking around and seeing, isn't it? You know, if you, if you are on guard duty, then you have to look around. You don't just sit there on your chair and read the paper or whatever. You actually have to look around and see what's happening. It's about being vigilant. It's about looking. It's about noticing. Of course, the early church 
probably expected Jesus to return pretty quickly. Some of them thought within their own lifetime, or certainly within like the next generation or so. Well, that obviously didn't happen, and we're still a couple of thousand years on, and we still are called to be vigilant. And that's hard, isn't it? Let's admit that straight off. It is hard to keep up that level of vigilance, that, that length of time, isn't it? I don't know if you've ever had to watch through the night for any reason whatsoever, but it's not so bad up until about, yeah, it's that time between like 3 and 5 o'clock in the morning, isn't it? That it gets really difficult. Even if you're, you know, if you're working a, a night shift or something, you've got a job to do, it's really hard to keep going. But to keep vigilant during those times is really difficult. But of course, if you are working a night shift like that, you know what's coming, don't you, in a couple of hours' time. Don't you? The daytime, not go home and go to bed. The daytime is coming. The dawn is coming. You know, there, there is that light that is coming. Glorious light. And this is what Jesus is saying to us. In the midst of the difficult waiting, be vigilant because the day is surely coming. Be vigilant because the daytime is on its way. The light is coming. Jill was leading us in earlier before the service started, thinking about these themes of Jesus coming. And one of them was as light of the world. In the darkest times, in the most difficult times, and we often turn around and say, the state of the world these days, oh dear, what's it like? But people have been doing that for the last 2,000 years. There's nothing new about that. But even in the midst of these difficult, dark times, Jesus is saying, watch and wait, be alert, because... The day is on its way. The light is coming. Now when Jesus didn't turn, return sort of like immediately as they perhaps expected, they then started to see the danger of um, falling asleep. Perhaps not quite of forgetting Jesus, but forgetting that, that sense of urgency about Jesus. And Jesus had this himself. When he began his ministry, he didn't just like come into a place and, and look for uh, three or four years before he started doing something. He came straight away, started preaching the good news, started healing people, started casting out demons, and all this sort of thing was going on right from day one. There was urgency there. Why? Because the days were short. Not just his, his earthly days, but the sense in which, in the great expanse of time, the time between his coming as a baby and his return is getting shorter and shorter and shorter. Paul says in, in Romans, you know, we are closer today to our salvation than we were previously. And he's talking about salvation in that widest sense of salvation from, from sin when you, you first accept Christ through sanctification into glorification. We're closer to that point of glorification than we were when we first received Jesus. And so a couple of thousand years have passed and we need to ask the question, are we still awake or are we gradually falling asleep? It's bit, no, you're not, Jim. You're definitely not. You're wide awake, mate. Definitely. And it's a bit like when you're sat in front of the telly at night and you suddenly realize you missed half an hour of that show you're watching. And you wake up and you think, like, well, who's that person? Where did they come from? Are you gradually falling asleep or are you awake? Are we as a church? Are we following Jesus or have we learned to live 
the ways of the world as everybody else. When you're asleep, you're not really aware of the world around you. I remember when um, we first had um, Catherine, and she was a tiny baby, and um, she'd be lying in a, a carry cot in the living room, and you could put the hoover on all around her, and she wouldn't wake up. Same wasn't true of Charlotte, but the tr that was true of, of Catherine. And she was completely oblivious to the world around her until she wanted something, and then she wasn't. And if you're only half asleep, things become a bit hazy, a bit unclear. You're not quite sure of what's going on. And so how do we keep awake? How do we keep awake as a church? I think it's by being more attentive to God's presence amongst us. And sometimes it's a mysterious presence. You can't completely explain what's going on. That's one of the reasons why we often ask the question, where have you noticed God recently? Yeah. It's to keep us all alert to the presence of God in our lives, but it's also to, to give witness to the presence of God in the lives of his people. Yeah. And so we need to be more attentive to God's presence, to know and to feel God's unconditional love for us, to give thanks for that, to be witnesses to it, because it is a love that is for all humankind. And because it, God's love is for all humankind, we also need to be attentive to the cries of those who are suffering. If we become a people whose hearts are hard and whose, whose ears are closed to the cries of those who are sick and suffering, who are weeping, who are mourning. If we fall asleep to those people, we're falling asleep to what Jesus is calling us to. Jesus sees people who are, who are suffering. Jesus sees people who are in need, and he goes to them. He doesn't tell them, well, you're not worthy of me coming to you because you're such a terrible person. Or you're not worthy of me coming to you because, well, you're not like me. He even went to Samaritans. He didn't say, I'm not coming to you because you're a foreigner. Jesus went to those who were suffering, who were in need, who were unloved, who were poor, who were sick, who were homeless, who were fleeing. He went to all of those. And he still does today if we will go for him. If we will be his hands and feet, he still does today. And so what happens is when we are awake, when we are awake and we are seeing people the way that Jesus sees them, then we might actually go to them as Jesus would go to them. And we might bring them that, those things that they need, that, that healing touch, that comforting word at the very least, or even that restoration of life. I think Jesus' fear is that we become a people concerned more about our religion than who he is, more concerned about preserving what we have rather than risking it all to see the kingdom of God revealed in the lives of other people. You see, he's the king of kings, he's the lord of lords, and his kingdom is here. We're not waiting for that. We're not waiting for the kingdom of God to come. It is already here. And in his word, it says, of the increase of his govern government and peace, there shall be no end. Mm -hmm. I love that verse because it speaks against the sort of like sense of doom and failure that we sometimes have in the church. 
You, know, you look around and you think, where's everybody gone? We're so much smaller than we used to be. We're not as strong as we used to be. We're not as young as we used to be. And all that sort of thing. And Jesus is saying, don't worry about any of that. Because of the increase of my government and peace, there should be no end. Not yours, but mine. Be awake. Be the people I've called you to be. And you'll see the truth of that. And so when we are awake... And living as the people of God rather than the people following you know, our religious practices or whatever it might be. Then the world around us sees the strongholds of sin, of fear, of poverty, of illness and suffering come tumbling down. That's the reality of what the ministry of the church is. It's a breaking down of those strongholds of the enemy. People of God who are asleep won't even notice those who are poor, those who are needy, those who are sick, those who are suffering. They won't even notice them. People of God who are, who are half asleep will work to alleviate suffering and pain. But the people of God who are fully awake will tackle the strongholds that create the suffering and pain in the first place. Challenging those powers and principalities. Breaking down those walls. Breaking open the prisons. Bringing healing and wholeness to people who are lost and dying. And that's what this time of Advent is about. Of waiting but waiting actively, not just sitting back and waiting, waiting actively, remembering the words of Jesus to be awake and then understanding what awake means as a people of God. Let's pray together. Lord our God, thank you for this, this reminder this wake-up call, if you will, to be watchful. Watchful as you are watchful, seeing the world as you see it, and then receiving your word to go and to be and to do. Only in and through you and your Holy Spirit. And so help us to watch and to wait and to wake up for the sake of Jesus and your kingdom come. Amen. We're going to uh, take up our offer tree now. Let's pray together. Lord God, through this season of Advent as we prepare for the Christmas festival, Christ born for us, we understand that you gave all for us to send your Son so that we might live. And so we offer you these gifts of money as a small token of all that we've received from you. May they encourage us to keep awake so that through these gifts in this church 
and through our following of your Son, Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God may be revealed in this place. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We're going to sing again. And uh, while we're singing, I um, encourage you to think about uh, where you've noticed God recently, because uh, that's what I will be asking you after we've sung this. We're going to sing um, Once in Royal David's City. Around this one, yeah. At the end of each verse, um, don't rush the last line, okay? Hold the last line. Follow us and you'll be all right. So, where have you noticed God recently? Come and share with us. Oh, I love it when somebody leaps to their feet. Come on, Nikki. 
Um, so uh, Monday, I had a really rubbish day at work. Not unusual. Um, I got a little bit short-tempered, and I uh, was especially short-tempered with the driver who came. And um, he was faffing around in the back of the truck, and I'm like, come on, drive. We've got so much to do. I was really rather short. So I went off, came back, and he poked his head around the side of the truck, and he went... I'm so sorry that my truck is in such a state. And I went, I'm so sorry that I was a bit short with you. I said, but there's just so much to do, and I'm feeling totally overwhelmed. And he just said, do not worry. Mm. That was God. Very good. And I said, drive, take your glove off, took mine off, shook his hand, and said, thank you so much. That are the words that I needed to hear. Mm. And it's still rubbish at work, but frankly, it doesn't matter now. <laughs> It actually, it just, I, I had such a much better day after that, but that was literally the words, they were literally God's words, that was God in that moment. Yeah. Well done, thank you, thank you. I think that's a really important thing to hear. You, know, you don't, I mean, I, I don't know whether this man is a man of faith or not, but God can speak to anyone and in any situation, and it's the hearing him in that is so important, yeah. Anybody else? That's good, thank you. I want to share with you um, an experience that I had uh, during the summer. Um, as many of you know, I went to uh, Israel, Palestine during the, the summer with Cliff College. And while we were there, we went to uh, Bethlehem. Uh, for 24 hours, and um, it was a, a fantastic experience, but also a very difficult experience, um, because Bethlehem is separated off from the rest of Israel by a huge wall. Um, the Israeli uh, government call it a, a wall of uh, separation for security reasons. Um, and whilst um, you know, some would argue that it does provide some security, it also is a huge um, way of dividing peoples of that land. And so the people who live on one side of the wall in Bethlehem have little or no access to the other side of the wall. So if you wish to work outside of the immediate place where you live, i.e. in that small place, Bethlehem, and it isn't a very big place, and you need to go out into the rest of Israel, you need to queue at this wall for hours, first thing in the morning. And we're not talking about half an hour, we're talking about five or six hours to get through, if they'll let you through. There have been um, numerous occasions where... Um, People who've been going to like hospital appointments outside of Bethlehem have been taken off buses and refused entry into the rest of Israel. And some of these people are taking children um, to hospital and they're not allowed to go through. And we're hearing, we're hearing uh, lots of stories like this from uh, Palestinian Christians in uh, that place. And one of the places that we visited was um, uh, called the Bethlehem Fair Trade Artisans. And it's run by uh, a lady who is a, a Palestinian Christian, uh, Susan, and um, she and her daughter and her husband before he died, he, they'd set up this um, essentially a cooperative organization. So uh, there's families, about 53 families across the Bethlehem area who create um, all sorts of uh, artisan gifts, basically, out of olive wood, out of glass, out of felt, um, textiles, all sorts of uh, things, soap. And um, they sell these uh, gifts and products uh, all over the world. And the way they're able to do this is through this cooperative uh, movement. Each artisan in their own wouldn't be able to do that because they're too small. They wouldn't have the access. And so the Bethlehem Fair Trade Artisans, they, they help promote uh, 
the work of these uh, small artisans working in their own you know, back rooms or garden shed sort of setups, a lot of them, and help them with uh, financing of uh, new machinery to uh, enable their production to increase, help them with uh, learning about finance and running businesses and all this sort of thing. And um, I've bought some uh, olive wood uh, gifts, mainly Christmas type gifts, um, nativity sets and uh, things that you can hang on your tree. Um, and I've got some here today, um, out by the, the coffee hatch there. Uh, and if you'd like to, to buy uh, anything, I'll be pleased to receive your money. If you haven't got your money with you today, let me know what you'd like, take it, and I'll make a note of uh, what you've taken, because I know where you all live, it's fine. And, um, and one of the things about this is, it's not only getting something that's nice, because it is, they are really nice things, actually, but it's also about um, getting something that is from Bethlehem as well. I think that's pretty, pretty good. But it's also helping uh, some people who... Uh, for no fault of their own, um, find themselves in a really desperate situation. Um, and, and so let's, let's see what we can do to uh, help and support these folks. Um, and uh, if you'd like to buy something, please do. We're going to pray together now, and uh, we're going to pray for uh, ourselves, for other people whom we know, uh, and for the world in general. So let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for the, the opportunities that we have living in, in a free society such as we have. May we, may we be more ready to be thankful than we are to, to be critical. But if there are things that we see which are not good, which are not just, which are not right, Remind us of how we need to walk humbly with you. So open our eyes, Lord, to see the world in way, the ways in which you see it. Keep us awake so that we might go in the name of Jesus. And so we pray for our brothers and sisters across the world. who even in the midst of preparing the coming of the Christ child will be risking maybe even their very lives, but certainly their freedom. May we always remember Christians who are persecuted for their faith. Support them with our prayers and if we can with our actions. Remember those places across the world where there is such a lack of love, where war and hatred rule the day. And so we continue to remember the people of Ukraine. those who are still there, those who fled. We pray for peace to come to that nation. And for those in Russia who can see the evil that is being done in their name, we pray that you would uphold them and strengthen them as they speak out. We pray for the people of Israel and Palestine. Lord, for there to be peace, there needs to be justice. We pray for your peace, your justice, to come to that land, to those people, to all people who live there. Show us, Lord, how even from a distance we can be advocates for peace and justice. 
and do what we can. Pray for our own communities where we live. The street in which we live, we remember our neighbours. We lift them to you now. We ask you to bless them. Bless their homes and their families. Teach us, O Lord, again what it means to be salt and light in the places where we live. Lord, as we, we're um, praying for our community, we, we can hear the happy noise next door. And we give you thanks for all those young lives and their families. And for all those families who come into contact with this church week by week. Lord, may we be awake so that we can see the kingdom of God come into their lives with such wonder and amazement that they would receive the Christ child themselves. We pray for our own families, our homes. Mm -hmm. May your blessing be upon them and each one of us this day and always. And in Jesus' name we pray. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So we have tea and coffee after service. Uh, Do stay if you're able to. And um, like I say, come and have a look at the... the, uh, the gifts from Bethlehem, and uh, if you'd like to buy anything but haven't got any money, let me know. I'll write it down. You won't get away with it. It's fine. Don't worry. Uh, you can take it today, and um, uh, some of them you can hang on your tree as well. So if you've got your Christmas tree up already, you can get a new decoration for it. Okay. Let's uh, sing as we close together. Let's stand together and sing Angels from the Realms of Glory. Angels from the realms of glory, wing your flight or all the earth. Ye who sang creation story, now proclaim. Seek the great desire of nations, ye have seen the natal star come and worship Christ the newborn King. Come and worship, worship Christ the Watching long in hope and 
appear Suddenly the Lord descending In His temple shall appear Come and worship Christ the newborn King Come and worship Worship Christ the newborn King All creation join in praising God the Father, Spirit, Son Evermore your voice is raising to the eternal So now may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.